dozing down that digestive tract and into my colon, things start shaking. When that starts shaking, I start shaking. And when I start shaking, and when it's ready to go, I can't stop it from coming! Welcome to the first ever Please Not An Hour Wrestling Podcast podcast by WrestleVision. My name is Dan, and here with me today is Connell. Hello. And that is me. That's you, exactly. And we've come up with this uh, short little podcast format. We do just 30 minutes and talk about a certain topic. And, uh, well, then I hope you enjoy this stuff. Uh, this is... Probably, yeah, you can call it the pilot episode, and if you like it, please tell us in the comments or on Twitter at WrestleVisionYT, and if you hate it, also do that, so we know what we can do better the next week, and it is planned that we have, like, a rotating format, so everyone at WrestleVision will one day be part of this, I guess. So, our main topic for today is... The WWE main roster ratings, and uh, yeah, Connor, what do we have to say about that? They suck. Amazing analysis. Yes. <laughs> um, I don't know. How do I? How would I fix it? I guess. Yes. Um, you see, I don't think there's obviously a real quick solution. It's obviously going to take months, or if not years, to amend it. Um, start by, you know, not producing the, the, qual the quality content that you produced on Monday would probably be a good start. Um, and, um, I think what they should do is that a lot of people, obviously they're tuning out because the storylines are bad and blah, 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 blah. But the wrestling itself is fine. So maybe advertise that aspect a bit more because maybe people think, oh, okay, this looks like a really fun match. Like on um, Raw coming out, they advertise Braun Strowman versus, is it Drew McIntyre? Which just sounds like a not, not, a, not a fun time. But like they announced Ali and Andrade ahead of SmackDown last week and everyone was excited for it. So who can't latch onto the storylines? I guess you can latch onto the actual wrestling. Yeah. So um, what you're basically saying that uh, especially Raw has failed uh, to um, maintain their star power. Um, yes. And uh, yes, yeah, SmackDown is at least lucky with the stars they have that people actually still like because uh, they haven't been ruined on Raw so much. Um, yeah, there are guys like Drew McIntyre who actually should be close to the Universal title or actually be Universal Champion at this point, but he isn't. And it's not like he's busy doing something else awesome. He's just having no actual storyline at all. Corbin. Yeah, he's teaming with Baron Corbin slash Bobby Lashley uh, in yeah some sort of unnamed stable that happens every once in a while when they need it. And, um, yeah, then you have these uh, fantastic storylines with the Usos and the Rival, which could easily be the greatest tag team feud that WWE had in a long while, because both of them are so great, and they could really, really build to that, like a big match at SummerSlam, but they chose not to, because, uh, yeah, from some backstage political reasons, I guess, and uh, Revival are a comedy act now, and the Usos, yeah, they're also a comedy act now, and that's how you make people not care and turn off, and or rather, or watch something else. I wouldn't have a problem with, a, with, with comedy acts if they were funny. Yeah. <laughs> like, 
heavy machine like Otis yeah, yeah. <laughs> like Otis okay it's 50% of heavy machine yeah <laughs> Just, just him. Just Tucker him. is just there. <laughs> He's just none of, there. None of the comedy, none of the comedy that comes out of your machinery is because of Tucker. Yeah, that's uh, Tucker. That's right. Um, yeah, another thing is great thing right now is the wildcard rule, which is just for me. Oh it's, yeah. It's just WWE admitting that they've failed once again um, with the brand split and. Uh, yeah, I could go on and on about this because uh, this is like the yeah the, the second time now that the brand split is falling apart, and it's not because the brand split itself is not working because with so many talented guys you need two rosters, or you just need to get rid of a lot of talents. That's the alternative. But uh, well, I would never do that. No. Yeah, and so you need you need two rosters because you can't feature all of them in one show. That's impossible. And um, yeah, so they came up with this white card rule where like an undisclosed uh, I say that uh, um, because undisclosed because uh, Vince keeps changing his mind and we had three, then we had four, so. It's better. We're sa it's safe to say it's an it's undisclosed. Four. It's, it's, it's four. He said free, but then Lars Sullivan made him shit himself, and then <laughs> gave it five yeah, before. Yeah, but was. then we had uh, Elias and Shane McMahon were not counted, and uh, well, I believe it's it. It could be more than four ne this week. It Who knows? Was, yeah, because we had it was Roman, Kofi, Brian, Lars, Shane, and uh, no, Elias. But I guess Shane's on all shows. Yeah, that's, oh, that's weird. Yeah. Uh, nobody's that's getting this rule. Um, um, probably most of our audience isn't aware because why should they watch these shows? But there's actually a German dub of uh, Raw and SmackDown and uh, not even the German announcers were able to make out these wildcard rules. So they tried their best and they even released a separate video on this. And well, um, yeah, how are you supposed to take this or to get this when they are not getting it. So um, they, Because they didn't understand themselves what it was on Monday. <laughs> when Vince did the ring on Monday announced it, he didn't know what it was. Yeah, so practically no one He just had no to think of knows. it after the show went off the air. <laughs> no one knows. His excuse to get Roman on the show because <laughs> he's the rating straw. Uh, but he isn't. Uh, well, at least if you count uh, like 30,000 gained viewers as an actual draw i don't know um yeah the thing is wwe has now also started to announce like half of the match card previously to the show so we already know what's going to happen on raw and smackdown so practically no surprises left and you can choose way earlier to turn off or not tune in which is not really <laughs> smart <laughs> And, um, yeah, another thing about the wildcard rule is that um, now, now you have Roman on Raw and SmackDown, and not just Roman, you have the WWE Champion on both shows. And, yeah, others like Cesaro, Cedric Alexander, and, uh, well, others that uh, that they have, like Apollo Crews, stars that they could actually build, they're not featured. So they are even increasing the the problem that they have that they can't build any stars because they always feature the same stars and uh, yeah there are no great characters especially on Raw but also on Smackdown because it's always the same stars and the wildcard rule is just uh, yeah some spirit <laughs> to the fire I guess <laughs> yeah <sighs> wildcard rule Here's an idea. Um, commit to your rosters. Yeah, yeah. Commit to your rosters. Uh, uh, yeah. The, so if you look at the at both Raw and SmackDown, if you uh, just look, take a look at the storylines, the only real storylines we have, like real storylines that uh, progress each week, is the Kofi Kingston and Kevin Owens storyline, and. Uh, the uh, United States uh, Championship storyline between Samoa Joe and Rey Mysterio. And the other uh, championship belts are just 
floating around. There's nothing really happening. Okay, you can say Becky Lynch, story, she has a storyline, but she has the same storyline on both shows with a different woman. Both Charlotte Flair and uh, Lacey Esm are doing basically the same thing on Raw and SmackDown, and that's just copy-paste. So... That's everything you have yeah. right now. Everything else is just, um, yeah, there. Everyone else is just having matches. I don't know. I said earlier on, like, announce a match. You got to have them mean something. You can't just have a match for the sake of having a match. Yeah, I mean, they, they had uh, qualification matches for Money in the Bank, but only a few, like, not all the... Uh, uh, they had none. They had none? They put Ricochet later, they said, no, it's everybody in there. Then Ricochet put it up already announced to be in it. Okay. They literally just picked every single person to be in it, man and woman. It's so confusing, I didn't really pick up on that. <laughs> yeah, they all just picked it, and then Ricochet, for some reason, had to defend it, and no one else did. That's That's actually pretty... Sad. <laughs> well, and there's there's also the Alistair Black thing. So it's the third week in a row that Alistair Black hasn't been featured on TV. He's just cutting nonsense promos like Bray Wyatt. And, uh, yeah, he's actively making people not care about him. I actually don't mind that. That's fine for me. I'd rather have him actually doing something that may lead somewhere than just having him wrestle pointless matches on TV. Yeah, I mean, but they're not building to something. It's not like he's, like, pointed out a victim or something, and uh, there's no mis mystery about it. It's just him talking mysterious stuff. Maybe that changes this week, but uh, then there's also guys like Buddy Murphy and Mojo Rawley who... Uh, Cut out in during the advert breaks and don't even make TV. They don't even make TV, and then they're... Then, then you have matches like um, the Viking Raiders, I call them that, uh, versus the Raw Tag Team Champions, Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins. And it's basically NXT Tag Team Champions versus Raw Tag Team Champions, and they have no build, and the Raw Tag Team Champions, who are supposed to be the, the superior team, because they are not developmental, um, or they are on, the, on um, yeah, national TV, They are losing to the um, Viking Raiders in uh, just seconds, and that's it. And there's there's no promo, there's nothing really. And yeah, probably uh, at Money in the Bank, the Raw Tag Team titles will switch to the uh, to the Viking Raiders, and uh, yeah, then the Viking Raiders will be left without any real competition. That serves for some great television, I guess. They'll move on to the Usos. But the Usos are busy humiliating the Revival. But uh, that'll be Finn. And, don't and then there'll be Kurt Hogan and Zack Ryder uh, making the Revival poo themselves. <laughs> oh. Instead of the Usos. Yeah. Mm. Oh man. And don't get, <laughs> don't get me started about the SmackDown Tag Team Division. <laughs> Oh, well, I mean, I'm happy because I love Brian, so I'm content with him being the champion. Yeah, that's great, but they don't have any... He's got no one to face. They're doing Brian versus Otis. Yeah, and I, Otis I hope, so, I hope Brian, so. Brian, and that is going to be the best feud. I hope so, because that's actually the best thing they can do right now. I mean, I'm a huge supporter of the, uh, of the Colognes, but uh, they are not... Um... Oh! WWE has just announced something. We probably should talk about it. You probably is it the Saudi? Is it the card for the Saudi show? Yeah. And it's uh, well, it's the name of the Saudi show. It's called Super Showdown. But the logo is gold. The show... Saudi Arabia. Yeah. The matches featured with are Goldberg versus The Undertaker. <laughs> with Randy Logan. Orton versus Triple H. <laughs> Uh, Battle Royal. Joy. I'm so excited for that one. 50 men Battle Royal. Uh, I just hope Kurt Hawkins wins this one. Um, it will be. It will be uh, Roman, probably. Roman. Yeah. Um, that's if Roman, because Roman wasn't going to go 
to the Saudi show in November. So he yeah. might not be on this one. Yeah, I hope so. Um, the less the better, I guess. But he is sure. there on the poster, so I assume he is going. Yeah, money. Um, so the taped uh, London, it's in London, I guess. The, yeah. Yeah. So the taped Raw for this week. Um, it's on right now, yeah. It, it's going to feature a double contract signing between Becky Lynch or Becky Two Bells or Becky Rollins, however you call, we call her, uh, and uh, Charlotte Flair and Lacey Evans. That's one thing announced. Yeah, that's going to probably be boring. And then we uh, have Miss TV with uh, The Miss welcoming Roman Reigns on the show. Your guess what's going to happen there? Um, Shane's going to come out with a Lars. They're going to beat each other up. No, it'll probably be the B team, actually. And they'll do Roman and the Miz versus the B team. Yeah, and on SmackDown, then Roman and the Miz versus uh, Elias and Shane. Yeah, Shane isn't wrestling on free TV, so I oh, think yeah. they're trying to... Oh, yeah. He's, he's, it will he's... be on SmackDown. It will be Roman and the Miz against Elias and the B team in a handicap match. <laughs> you are the authority authority now. <laughs> yeah, and another great epic match announced for Raw: a fatal four-way. Um, it's called the Money Momentum Match. <laughs> um, oh. Naomi, Natalia, Alexa Bliss, and Dana Brooke. <laughs> Literally sounds like the worst match I've ever seen. <laughs> no, because there's something else announced for Raw. <laughs> It's Baron Corrin versus Ricochet, and I probably probably uh, that Ricochet is going to lose. <laughs> yeah, because he won last week. Oh, there's more, man. There's more. Baron Corbin, uh, not sorry, not Baron Corbin, Braun Strowman, and Drew McIntyre. I'm definitely not bored of this. Yeah, I have never. Why? I've never seen this match before. It's, it's so unique, it's so creative. <laughs> Yay, it this will, looks. It will probably end with Braun throwing Drew into a dumpster. <laughs> It'll probably end um, with Bobby Lashley and Baron Corbin coming out, getting a DQ. Braun wins, and then they throw him through a table. Yeah, and then Sami Zayn does, does something, I guess. No, Sami Zayn just gets out of the dumpster like he did on SmackDown. Yeah, but he didn't get out of the dumpster on SmackDown like that. Well, he, was out. he just showed up, but he wasn't yeah. in a dumpster. For being killed on Raw. Yeah, because He's just... screw consistency... Make people care even less. <laughs> yeah, that's just WWE's motto. What happens last? What happened last week doesn't matter this week. <laughs> so how are you supposed to invest in something? <laughs> The only thing you're supposed to invest in is Roman. Yeah, uh, yeah, but, but you can't really you can't really invest in Roman either because. You don't know He's what... feuding with the B team. And Shane. And Elias. <laughs> and well, who knows? Maybe they turn the Miss heel that's again that's and he's feuding with the Miss too. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna um turn they're gonna do the the tag match at the pay per view in Saudi Arabia. Miz is gonna turn on him and then reunite the Miz to Raj. Oh. But with Elias there as well. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, um, we still have uh, around 11 minutes left on the clock, so um, yeah, what else do you think is going to happen on Raw? Um, I reckon the, the users are going to slip a laxative in um, catering, or are going to eat it and they're going to poo themselves in the ring. I, no, my prediction is they do the old Dolph Ziggler slash uh, Suicide Squad uh, thing, where, like, uh, some crap is coming. No, the... that happens the week after, because that, then you've introduced crap into the story, so they have a reason <laughs> to do it. Oh, man, I forgot that WWE really care about the storyline so much, yeah. <laughs> that, even, I mean, when I'm, even when I'm 
fantasy booking a storyline where the revival poo themselves. I put more thought into it than they do. <laughs> Oh man, yeah. And uh, what about the uh, United States title? What's going to happen there with Dominic? What do you think? It's going to happen with Big Dom. Finally. Are you still there? Yes. Yeah. So I believe that. Um, Dominic um, is going to accompany Ray to a match, not against Samoa Joe, but Ray. Probably the song of the desire. It's going to be against Bobby Lashley. Yeah, probably. And then um, we are going to have like some sort of stare down with Samoa Joe after the match, something. And yeah, it's oh, going but to. Don't forget that um, Joe's going to be on commentary and you hear this track, Dominic. And then Ray's going to get distracted and Lashley's going to spear him and win first. Yeah, that sounds actually like something yeah, they would do. Yeah. And afterwards, Sirio gets up after losing. Lashley just walks on the back and then they do the stare down. But we probably all know how the storyline is going to end. So next week or the week after that, uh, Samoa Joe is going to pretend to attack Big Dom. But in ter in actually, uh, Big Dom is turning on his own father. And uh, yeah. yeah, that's that's what's going to happen. Um, we are, all have seen these storylines play what out. What is going on on Raw right now? Um, tag titles. I'm guessing the Vikings are just going to pin go home and like Ryder again. Yeah, probably yes. Or, or they'll do. Eva will pin Zack Ryder in a singles match. Yeah, yeah, probably singles match. I, I guess they are going to book a singles match this time. They have to. No, no they're not. They're probably going to book Ryder and Hawkins versus the Vikings again. But Hawkins and Ryder are going to roll them up and beat them. So then there's the uh, women's tag team division. Maybe they are going to do something. Oh, yeah, um, one of the Iconics will get pinned in a 20 second match by who's not even in. Yeah, probably, probably some uh, NXT UK female jobbers. Storm, yeah. Yeah, no, <laughs> Tony Storm. But uh, maybe um, I would I would say Candy Floss, but she uh, no. So um, uh, maybe maybe Zaya Brookside and. Um, um, you're stupid for even booking an Iconics win. It's gonna be Tony Storm pinning Peyton Royce. We'll need we'll lead nowhere, but just got opinion champion, I guess. Oh man, that sounds like something they would do. Hey, and we have still have the wildcard rules, so I believe Finn Bella is going to show up because he is oh, somewhat is British. <laughs> and then he's gonna fight. Who's a heel on? No, he hasn't even got to be on Raw, wildcard and all that. Yeah, so, yeah, it's 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 uh, Finn Bella versus, uh, versus yeah. Shelton Benjamin. Or, Finn Bella on, on Raw. Or versus, I'm just scroll, scrolling through the roster right now. We already uh, got Bobby Lashley busy, so it's, it can't be him. Um, Cesaro, it's <laughs> Cesaro. Yeah, that's the match. Cesaro versus Bella. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, Bray Wyatt is going to have another fun... Uh, yeah. Firefly Funhouse. Oh. Oh. oh, not Cesaro. Not Cesaro. Robert Root. It's going to be Finn Balor versus oh. Robert Root. It will be Robert Root. Yeah. Cesaro will face Cedric Cobain event again. <laughs> yeah. And Death EC3, he could do something. He could jump to someone. I'm pretty sure he's jobbing to tight or something event right now as we speak. <laughs> oh man. Because he's been losing to tight on all the house shows. That's so sad. And he's later he's also going to uh, going to do something. <laughs> he's probably he's... go he's probably coming out dressed in like a Union Jack outfit and then he's going to be attacked from behind uh, by Lars Sullivan. Lars Sullivan. By Lars Sullivan, yes. Yeah. Yeah, um, that, I think we effectively booked Raw, forgot about Ruby Riot no, as not, it should be. Not be. Of course, that's not going to be it. It's going to 
Lucha House Party winning a random squash again. And we will see some UK person, maybe Pete Dunne, maybe Walter. Yeah, I don't believe it's going to be Walter, and I also believe it's not going to be Pete Dunne again, so I believe it's going to be old Tyler, Pete. Tyler, good old Tyler. <laughs> I believe it's going to be Tyler. It might be, it might be someone else, or they might just do Tony Storm pitting Peyton Royce. Yeah, and then nothing happens. Oh, ah, it's oh. going to be Rhea Ripley. They love Rhea Ripley. But she's in a bit of a pickle and, right and now. And she's, yeah, she's... Oh, no, she's, but so is Lars Sullivan in it. And he's still going to be on Raw, so yeah, Rhea Ripley's fine. Yeah, and uh, she's not injured anymore. And she's very British, so... Why not? <laughs> so British, she's on the other. She comes from the other side of the world. <laughs> oh man, yeah. Well, um, that's raw. We still have uh, four minutes on the clock, so we can uh, just talk about how great Zach Gibson is and how he would never work on the main roster. Or uh, um, just talk about how great Baron Corbin is. Yeah, Baron Corbin, the... He brings the darkness. He's probably, yeah, he, he brings the thunder. <laughs> he comes from hell and he pulls you under. And, uh, yeah. and he pins Richie. And gets the most airtime out of everybody for some weird reason. He he, he always gets a promo, a backstage segment. We haven't segment. advanced anything with the Universal title on Raw. So yeah, probably realistic. Yeah, we still haven't talked about the Universal title picture, so something AJ Styles uh, slash um, Rollins and Baron Corbin a thing. They're where they come to blows. And then they're going to announce a triple threat match anyway. With Baron Corbin. Yeah, with Baron Corbin, because they realized, ah, we don't want to turn AJ here, but we still want to keep that Rollins baby face. What have we done three weeks into this? Okay, we have to, we have to put a heel in this. <laughs> That's they just can't book face versus face at all. Yeah, yeah, you can't do that. That's impossible in uh, on Raw or SmackDown. And then we get to SmackDown, and on SmackDown we've got I can't remember what's advertised. Um, uh, some match with Ali. Oh yeah, Ali, Andrade, Balor, and Orton in a fatal four way because that's definitely you. Yeah, it's definitely just, original. Just getting them on the on the show because uh, abroad shows don't matter. And also, <laughs> Kofi Kingston will <laughs> do something. Yeah, he will probably have like a backstage segment. <laughs> no, Finn he's... Balor will be fresh off his Raw. He won't appear on SmackDown because it's the wild card Raw. He'll only appear on Raw, and we have to make space for Roman to come in and face the B team and Elias and Hell. I feel bad for the Londoners. It's the Miz who comes over in the wild card, not Roman. Never mind. Um, I don't know what the women are doing on SmackDown. I don't know what Brian's doing. Maybe they will show Nikki Cross to the audience. She's somewhat British. <laughs> and yeah, she came out last time though. Yeah, but well, maybe England. this time with the Emelina gimmick. Who knows? Yeah, she's not. She's not. She's not dark anymore. She's, they're trying to sexify her. Yeah, for some weird reason. That's not working, damn it! We have to make her. God damn it, pal! <laughs> you could get over, pal. Maybe she's able to do the southern accent. This would we'll get her push. <laughs> yeah. So um, we are. Coming to a close, one minute Southern on the accents. clock. Any final words, Connor? Southern accents are the best. Yes, they get you over. So they do. Uh, yeah, we talked a little bit of about the ratings and the current main roster situation, and uh, uh, gave some predictions for Raw and uh, SmackDown. And yeah, I we hope you liked this first episode of. Uh, please, not on another wrestling podcast. Podcast, uh, the show with the longest name in the world. Who had this brilliant idea? 
And um, yeah, um, thank you for listening. Please follow us uh, at <laughs> Westervision YT on Twitter. Um, give us a subscribe, like this video, share this video around, and thanks for listening. Goodbye. Hey, bye.